Polygyny is a form of marriage in which a man has multiple wives. Proponents of polygyny argue that it provides several benefits over monogamy. Firstly, it allows for a larger family structure which can provide greater emotional and financial support. In a polygynous family, multiple wives can share the responsibilities of child rearing, household chores, and other domestic duties. This can reduce the workload on any one individual and create a more harmonious living environment. Secondly, polygyny can provide greater economic security. In many cultures, polygyny is practiced in societies where men are expected to provide for their families. Having multiple wives can provide a greater pool of resources and reduce the financial burden on any one individual. Additionally, polygyny can provide greater social status and prestige as it is often seen as a sign of wealth and power. Yeah, the 
organization of human life, its systems of communication and systems of control are extended more and more and more in just the same way, for example, that by assimilating the minerals out of the soil and the rays out of the sunlight, a plant like a fern grows and grows and grows and extends its form. And in this way, its organization prevails. Now then, you see, if you take this task of what we call the conquest of nature, the task of making order victorious over chaos or randomness, if you take this seriously, you will look upon it as warfare. And you will firmly believe that the most urgent thing that there possibly can be is to make order prevail over randomness, to make good prevail over evil, to make life prevail over death. And we find that when we are in a contest of this kind, a serious warfare game of this kind, and we take it seriously, we are involved in it in a very deep, bitter sense. Now the difference of Buddhism from science as a form of knowledge is that in Buddhism it would be said that this view of things, this view of the task of life as making order triumph over disorder, leaves something out. You remember right at the beginning I made some importance of a Sanskrit word which is fundamental in Buddhism. Avidya. Avidya. 
which meant ah means non, vidya, knowing. Non-knowing or ignorance, or better, ignorance. Ignorance, in other words, leaving something out of account. And I want to use a familiar illustration to show in what way we ignore. You see here a figure which is apparently, as you look at it, two faces in profile about to kiss each other. Now, if we draw back a little from those two faces, we can see on the white area in between them the form of a cup. But the interesting thing about this is that as you look at it, you will either be able to see the form of the cup or the form of the two faces in profile, as it were, about to kiss each other. You can alternate them be between them very rapidly, but you will not be able to see them both that way at the same time. In other words, either the white must be the background and the black the figure on the ground, or else the black must be the background and the white cup showing up on it. And so in this way, we are unable to see really, we can think it, after a while we can get accustomed to the idea that the figure and the ground, the black and the white, are mutually necessary to each other. In that figure that I showed you, you could say both the cup with the stem and the two faces are there, but our ideas about them, our concepts, are mutually exclusive and we cannot see them both at the same time. And in the same way, in this figure that I drew, uh, we either see the sawn off stumps or the bear claws. It's difficult to see this figure both ways at the same time. And so, also, just as we see one and not the other, so we identify ourselves. After all, when you're looking at the white figure in that illustration, which is the cup, you, as it were, identify with the cup. When you look at the two faces, you identify with the profile. So in the same way, when we experience the world around us, we identify with the subject, the knower. We don't identify with what we see. But as a matter of fact, if there is nothing seen, there is no experience of a seer. If there is no seer, there is no experience of anything seen. They both go together in the same way as the black and the white. And this idea...